Hey, it's Robert Niney, your Spray Foam Advisor. And last week I talked about vapor retarders and vapor barriers and the terminology and how they're used and where they're used and kind of some examples of each. But there is a question that I want to answer and I want to help people out there understand because you often hear this and I think it's a really misunderstood concept and oftentimes it's overused and just uh, mis, uh, uh, misstated in many ways. But the idea behind this is no double vapor barriers. You should never have a double vapor barrier. You have to be very cautious and change the design as much as you can so that you don't have a double vapor barrier. And that's a very simplistic way to think about vapor barrier design and ultimately uh, managing the, the, the vapor drive of an assembly. So let, let's dig into that a little bit deeper and talk about this concept of having a double vapor barrier system, okay? So let's take the, uh, you know, the most strict possible scenario you put a type 1 vapor retarder, so less than 0.1 perms, on the inside of an assembly like a visqueen uh, or, or metal, and then you put the exact same thing on the outside. You put visqueen or metal on the outside so that you have another very, very strict vapor retarder on the outside of the assembly. In theory, you're not going to have any vapor issues inside the, those two planes inside that cavity, right? In theory, you're not going to have any issue with that assembly. Why? Because your type, your vapor retarder, your type one vapor retarder uh, on the inside is protecting vapor drive from the inside to the outside and vice versa on the outside. Your type one vapor retarder on the outside is protecting vapor driver from the outside to the inside. So you are not going to have any vapor drive issues. You're not going to have any vapor that gets in. Now, why do I keep saying in theory? Because in the real world, no, it's very, very difficult. It's, uh, it doesn't happen very often to have a vapor uh, barrier system or a type 1 vapor retarder or even a type 2 vapor retarder for that point installed perfectly. And so if you don't have a perfectly installed system, then of course there is a higher risk that you can get vapor into the system. And if you get vapor into the system, what happens at that point? So that's really kind of the fear is what happens when you get vapor into the system and if you get vapor into it, in theory, it can go back out the same way it came in. But for that to happen, you have to have a reversal of the vapor drive. So you have to have uh, a significant shift in uh, temperature and, uh, and, and vapor drive uh, for that to occur. And you might get that in some climates, but it's not going to occur in all climates, okay? So what can happen? What's the fear of a double vapor barrier system? The fear is that you get maybe a penetration of some kind and uh, flow goes through and it accumulates. And, and even without a penetration, maybe it accumulates somewhere in the system because vapor drive is continuously moving in one direction and it builds up, it builds up, it builds up and it accumulates. Okay, so let's think about this a little bit of a different way. First, you should, when you're dealing with a vapor drive design, when you're dealing with the design of an assembly for the purposes of protecting it from vapor and damaging effects that can happen through vapor drive and vapor diffusion, let's think about how these assemblies work, right? Identify the number one cause of issue, the number one cause of concern for vapor drive and vapor diffusion. So, for example, the number one cause of concern in the north for vapor diffusion is going to be uh, warm, moist air on the interior of the building traveling through the assembly to the outside. Why? During the winter. Why? Because there's more moisture on the inside of the building, so the vapor pressure is higher on the inside of the building than it is on the outside. So the vapor drive wants to move from higher pressure inside to lower pressure outside. So the vapor drive in the winter in the north is going to be from the inside through the assembly to the outside. And it's going to be that way most of the winter in the north, right? So what happens if we put up a vapor barrier on the inside and we have one on the outside? Um, that vapor drive continuously moves in one direction. And in theory, it can build up, it can build up, it can build up. And, um, and you might have a problem, okay? But how do we address this, right? What, what's the right way to think about it? Okay. So let's, let's dig into this a little bit deeper one more time. Now, if you put that vapor retarder, that vapor barrier, less than 0.1 perm, uh, or just we'll say less than one perm even, a uh, material that's less than one perm on the inside, and you put a material that's less than one perm on the outside, um, could you have issue? Yes, you could have issue. But let's talk about the way to approach this design so that you can mitigate most of those concerns, right? So we know that the major issue is vapor drive moving from the inside where there's higher vapor pressure 
uh, moisture that we've created on the inside of the building driving through the exterior assembly, through the wall to the outside, right? So what if we put, make sure we have the stronger vapor retarder on the inside, so it's the first toll booth, for example, that has to be passed, and after it passes that booth, then it can escape throughout the assembly. Uh, we allow it to escape through the assembly faster. Because ultimately, that's the concept behind uh, the code saying put the vapor retarder on the inside of the assembly, on the warm and winter side of the assembly. We control the moisture flow, we control the vapor drive, we control the vapor diffusion by putting the stronger vapor retarder on the interior of the assembly. And then as moisture moves through it, we have weaker vapor retarders on the outside. And if that occurs, then it's like the highway opens up. So after you go through the first toll booth, of the say 0.5 vapor retarder on the inside of the assembly and then the 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 vapor diffusion the vapor drive then runs into a uh, a one perm assembly inside you know on the exterior for example well it's like the the highway just doubled you know it just it's like it just went from one lane to two lanes for the purposes of vapor diffusion therefore it will move slower through the first lane the toll booth on the inside the vapor drive moves slower through that. And rather than building up and accumulating in the assembly, it actually will move through faster because you have lower vapor retarders on the exterior. So the issue is not a double vapor retarder system. The issue, the bigger issue and the bigger concern is if you have a stronger vapor retarder on the exterior of the assembly or where you might have the damaging effects from vapor diffusion and vapor drive. So if you have a stronger vapor retarder on the outside of the assembly, then that can cause moisture accumulation, vapor accumulation, and ultimately could possibly lead to condensation. Now, this is a very rare thing to occur. Vapor diffusion uh, doesn't cause many moisture problems. Most of those are gonna be related to air infiltration issues. Um, however, it is something to be aware about primarily because you hear this in the industry uh, on a regular basis and you get this question, what about vape, what about the double vapor retarder? So uh, take that uh, piece of wisdom, do with it what you will, use that while you're out there in the market. It's not so much about having a double vapor retarder in the assembly. It's more important to make sure that the stronger vapor retarder is on the inside of the assembly if you have two vapor retarders in the assembly. This is Robert Niney with Spray Foam Advisor. Thanks for checking us out. Catch us on some more videos. I love questions. Anyone out there, feel free to shoot in a question. I'll give you a, uh, an email address right here for any questions you have. Send them to questions at sprayfoamadvisor.com. Sprayfoamadvisor singular.com. So questions at sprayfoamadvisor.com. Go ahead and send those questions in. I'll get to as many of them as I can and I'll, I'll try to incorporate a select few into some of my uh, weekly videos. And of course, uh, if you like this uh, video, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the blog if you haven't already done that. Find us on YouTube and uh, like us, uh, like and follow us there. And uh, check us out on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, find us on all of your favorite social media sites and uh, you can keep up with the words of wisdom coming out of Spray Foam Advisor. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. We'll catch you on some more videos. Take care.